All right, I'm gonna go over um, a two pound gas system on these buildings. So when I got here, most everything was run in a standard low pressure, eight inches of water column system. Um, I started kind of converting everything over to two pound systems just for the installation, the labor, uh, and the material cost savings. Um, what we have here, there's obviously no meter, no gas meter, just a regulator. Uh, our, the facility here, we have our own gas di uh, dist distribution piping. Um, and one gas line meter at the very front of the facility. So we just have a utility line regulator. We got around 40 pounds of gas pressure coming in and then regulates through two pounds going out. This originally was a low pressure regulator and I contacted Fisher and had them uh, basically send me the spring. All I needed was a spring and I replaced the springs in these to increase them to a two pound system. I've got a T and a plug here that I use to set the gas pressure with a 2, two PSI manometer. Um, so once again, 45 PSI utility, well, 35 to 45 utility line pressure, 2 PSI building pressure. Um, so we can get a lot more gas in a much smaller pipe. So there's a tremendous savings in material and labor. So that's the outside portion of, the, of this two pound system. This regulator needs a like a stainless steel identifica identification tag or something. There originally was a little sticker here that is gone, um, so we'll need to address that. But that's the outside portion of this gas system. So inside here we have, this is a little washroom. You can see here we have gas lines stubbed out to each dryer, half inch gas lines. There is a regulator in a appliance regulator no it is not a utility line regulator i'm about to show you what they look like it's right here behind this compartment this is a 12 inch uninsulated wall there's a tremendous amount of airspace uh, there's also a vent i believe cut in the wall somewhere but there's a, a uh, regulator behind that wall that feeds a manifold that comes down and it takes care of all of these um, dryers now in here oh my light just turned off there we go. This is our tankless water heater for this building. I'll do a follow-up video on proper installation of those. But you can see here, we're coming out of the wall with a half inch galvanized line. I'm sorry, black iron. I get these forged valves. I don't like the two-piece valves. The forged ones are a little bit more money um, and there's not a seam right there. I've seen seams on the non-forged uh, two-piece valves leak um, so I always prefer these forged valves um, but so here we go we're, we're coming in we hit our uh, drip leg um, this can be really any size you want a lot of inspectors want to see a six inch it's whatever code just specifies that you need a nipple um, we have a union this is not needed right here um, because you have a means of disconnect here so we're coming drip leg before the regulator because we're wanting to keep any trash or particulates from getting into this regulator. That's key um, in any gas system. So if you have any sort of regulator, you need a drip T, but that is the exception of the utility line regulator. Um, so we're coming through. This is a Maxitrol. If I'm pronouncing that route right, it's a 325-5L. It is a two PSI class one regulator. And it takes it from two PSI to seven inches of water column. This is your little ventless, your little vent free adapter. This is a separate part you can buy or you can buy it with it already installed. Uh, this is a limiting device um, and it keeps you from having to run a vent pipe. Um, and you see there, they're certified. There was a tag, somebody has removed it. But if you install these, leave the tag on there for the inspector to see. You may also want to call your municipality and make sure they're okay installing these. I have put in hundreds over the years and I've never ever had a problem. Now, the code also states that when you have a regulator, you have to have a way to check the pressure before and after the regulator. You gotta know if this regulator is working. So we, had, we can put a port here by simply removing this cap. I can put a port here. And then right here, I have a port on my actual water heater. So I can have my manometer, have one side of the manometer hooked here, one side of the manometer hooked here, uh, and I can check my incoming pressure versus uh, my regulated pressure coming out. 
These regulators have to be installed in this configuration. Horizontal on the body, vertical on the spring, if that makes sense. And the little tag that hangs on there states that. You cannot install these any other way. Um, they will not, the, little, the limiting device will not work. Um, very, very, very important. So, All right, so this is uh, one of the two air conditioners in this building. So we did, on these buildings here, we did all of the mechanicals. So I, I, I sized out the gas, sized out the plumbing, the electrical, laid it all out, um, and installed it. So right here, you have your gas line coming up, another forged valve, disconnect, regulator, here's your little tag. And it gives you your information for the, the, the city inspector to see about this being a code compliant regulator. And then we're coming across here and I have soft copper. The reason I ran soft copper is because these units, let me see if I can get a video right there. I never ever run, I can't see, I never run anything, so I only will come out of these units with black iron so I actually have a black iron uh, street elbow right here and then I have my soft copper hooked up I could have easily used a flex um, I think it just had this laying around and it's a short little piece so that's why I did it that way but always come out of your air conditioners with black iron um, the reason for that being is I can put my hand on this unit and I can feel it vibrating some of them vibrate more than others and if you have a flex line going in there over time that flex line can rub and it will actually chew a hole through the side of that gas line and can leak out. So they now make rubber seals and all kinds of extra stuff, but just don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, it's, it's gas, it's flammable. Spend a few extra minutes, buy yourself a 14 inch black iron nipple and you'll be fine. So that's this system here, two PSI coming in. This, these, this small half inch regulator is rated for up to 200,000 BTUs. So you could use that one regulator to run this furnace, which is an 80,000 BTU, I believe. And you could run a, um, like a standard 40 gallon or a 50 gallon natural gas hot water heater. All right, so this is the other system. You can see here, we got our drip leg there on the right and our test T, um, or a T with a plug. And that way we can take that off and hook up a manometer before and after the regulator to check pressure to make sure that regulator is functioning as it is intended. We have our service valve there. All of the gas piping that I typically run is hard pipe. Um, we have a, a rigid 300 uh, threader, and it's just, to me, once you get used to running black iron, you can run it almost as fast as anything else. The new arc flash stuff, a lot of people swear by it. I don't like it, I don't trust it. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad product. I just, I just don't use it. Um, it doesn't take me a whole lot longer to run the black iron. So, and I just feel better about it long term. I've been in houses that are 100 years old and the black iron is still good. So that's, that's why I like black iron. Um, and then I use a, a better type of sealant as well. And we'll show you that sealant and the pressure gauge that I use when I go back up to the warehouse. Um, so the way you do a, a pressure test on these systems, you have to pressure test them to 10 times the operating pressure. Uh, I'm sorry, three times the operating pressure according to code. But every, inspect, every municipality they ever dealt with, they wanted 10 pounds for 10 minutes. We would pump it up to 10 pounds. They would walk through the house, walk to the building, look at everything, make sure everything was installed correctly, walk back outside and make sure that it was still holding at exactly 10 pounds. Um, the pressure gauge that you have to use is also specific. The code states that it cannot operate at more than 10 times your test pressure. So if I'm, if I'm running a 10 pound test, I have to have a gas or a pressure um, gauge that has a maximum reading of 30 pounds. Um, I only had one tester or one inspector ding me on that years ago and I thought it'd be okay and he said no. So um, I learned my lesson and I just kept buying the standard or buying the proper test gauges. So our test, pressure tester, anyway, whatever. Um, that's it, so that is the a basic overview of a two pound gas system. Um, once again, you can run multiple appliances off of an appliance regulator as long as you do not exceed. I would probably actually stay about 30% below the maximum uh, BTU range of the regulators. I've only ever used the half inch and the three quarter. 
they do make uh, one inch as well, I believe. Well, I cannot find a gas gauge. Um, I've got one in my personal truck, but my personal truck's not here. So the gas gauges that I use are, um, I've always got mine at Home Depot, but you can get them from any supply house, like plumbing supply house. Just make sure that it's a, um, it's a, it's a pressure gauge. It'll just screw on the end of a three quarter inch pipe and it'll, it'll have a maximum, uh, maximum reading of 30 pounds with a little air, little air, air chuck on it. So, um, this is the thread sealant that I use. It's a rec rector seal, true blue. Um, this is by far my, my favorite and, um, works really, really well. That's all I use. And, uh, that's really it. So check for leaks. Um, Pressure test, check for leaks, take time, and uh, like I said, I've never never had an issue. So, and this is not um, this is not a how-to video on how to put a pipe in. This is a simply a what to look for after a qualified licensed contractor has come in and done the work. Um, I do not recommend people grabbing a pipe threader or grabbing a, a regulator and think they can come in and do this. I mean, you, there's a lot of little things that have to be taken into account when you're running gas pipe. Um, so this is not a, I would never recommend someone that is not qualified to run gas piping. So this is simply a, um, maybe a German gas fitter is looking at running a two pound system, is unfamiliar with it. That's why I made this video. Um, so anyway. Uh, that's it.